Welcome back. Health experts are warning one third of today's young Australians will go on to develop diabetes. A new report is calling for urgent action on the often preventable epidemic. I'm joined now by the report's author, Associate Professor Jonathan Shaw from Melbourne. Good afternoon, Jonathan. Good afternoon. Why is Generation Y at such high risk of diabetes? Well, they're really joining in the risk that everyone else has, that uh, as we've changed our lifestyles and eating more and doing less, we're putting on weight and putting ourselves at risk of conditions like type 2 diabetes. Uh, and and when, we, when we run the numbers on, uh, on the young people of today, we see that uh, one in three of those young people are going to develop diabetes sometime during their lifetime. You mentioned type 2. Is there a rise in cases of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Yes, there is actually. Most people we, uh, hear a lot about the increases in type 2 and the related to lifestyle, but we're actually seeing something rather similar in type 1 diabetes, uh, which has appeared over the last 10 or 15 years, that, uh, that an increase in the number of cases of type 1 diabetes in children. Um, we don't understand this. It doesn't seem to be related to the same issues that we see in type 2 diabetes. It's probably not lifestyle related, but we're, at this stage we don't know what's causing it. Jonathan, what needs to be done? What is the national action plan you've put to the federal government? Um, nationally, what we need to do is, is recognise that uh, there's a lot that we need to change, but that a lot that needs to happen is not things that are always in the control of the individual. It's very easy to say things like, we've all got to exercise more, we've all got to eat more healthily, and it's important that we do take that sort of responsibility. Um, but many things that need to change to really have an impact are at the level of society and community and, at gov and at government. Uh, if we were lived in an environment where it was easiest to choose healthy food rather than unhealthy food, if it was easiest to be physically active rather than inactive, uh, then we would find that people made those healthy choices and we've got to find ways of engineering uh, physical activity back into our daily lives and engineering the right sort of diets for people. Let's hope we can. We'll leave it there. Associate Professor Jonathan Shaw, thanks for your time. Thank you.